Your new job is counting hornets, and on your first day, just as you were close to finishing counting, one of them delivered a sting on your arm. Out of reflex, you smack the hornet away. This will prove to be a big mistake. Hornets, just like many other wasps, can mobilize an entire nest to sting in defense. So after getting stung a couple hundred times, you get back to work to keep counting the hornets. But there's an issue. You can't remember how many you've counted. And since the exact number of these hornets is of extreme importance, you have to start again. Now, since you've seen the thumbnail and the title of the video, you probably know where I'm going with this. But the message of this story is to count in tallies. If you had counted in tallies, you would have an external visual reference point to go back on, instead of relying on a small part of your brain. How small? This small. This article outlines the study in which they scanned the brain with an fMRI scan while participants were undergoing numerical calculations. So instead of relying on this, the use of tallies bypasses the cognitive task of counting and rather pairs the use of the visual and motor cortex instead. So when counting hornets, use tally marks. And when using this method, you draw a vertical line to represent individual units, with a diagonal line drawn through every fifth line to group them. Why group them? Would you rather count this or this? When counting hundreds or thousands of tallies, groups of five make it easier to count. For example, you could add this first row up and multiply it by the column. But for example too, you will still have to manually count each tally or group them into five. Up to counting to three, this tally system is visually identical to Roman numerals. We also see this example in Chinese numbers and the Brahmi numeral system if rotated 90 degrees. Even though they look visually the same, these three strokes of a tally and these three in Roman numerals are fundamentally different. A tally mark when using tallies is a simple mark or stroke used to represent individual units. But Roman numerals are based on a set of letters from the Latin alphabet for a number system. Roman numerals can represent numbers through a combination of letters, with each letter having a specific numerical value that, when added together, represents the total value of the number. The same thing applies to Chinese numbers, where a combination of two characters that are assigned a value represents a number based on a rule set. This is not possible with tally marks, as each stroke represents a single unit or a unit of your choice. Further, tallies have limited scalability, so they are well suited for counting smaller quantities, but for chunks of bigger numbers, using symbols in a number system would be more suitable. But cultures using Chinese characters don't use this sort of tally. Instead, they use this character, which, when not used as a tally, means correct. The character also has five strokes, similar to the tally marks we covered before, which again makes it easier to group and count. In France, Portugal, Spain, and Latin America, this form of tally is most common commonly used for registering scores in card games like Truco. And this variant of tally has a use case that the slash variant and the correct variant cannot emulate. And that's if the tally is made out of physical objects. If you are given a box of matches for the purposes of tallying, the slash variant requires you to stack a match on top of four other matches, which might cause it to crumble apart or roll off if the matches aren't made with precise measurements. The correct variant uses strokes of two different lengths. So if this variant were replicated with matchsticks, it would look like this. Whereas the box variant would have no difficulty achieving this task. In data books or reports relating to forestry, they tend to use a dot and line tally, where a completed dot and line symbol is representative of 10. In bulletin number 20, measuring the forestry crop, Table 11 shows the dot and line tally system when estimating lumber. Its use is justified in the report because it enables the estimator to record a large number of logs on a single sheet and can be quickly and easily read in blocks of 10. Counting techniques such as this can be seen back in the Upper Paleolithic period, where tally sticks 
in the form of notched animal bones, were used for a wide range of tasks. A notable example is the Ishango bone that was discovered in the Democratic Republic of the Congo in 1950. The bone itself is about 10 centimeters and features a sharp piece of quartz affixed to the end, which is speculated to be for engraving. The bone has tally marks carved in three columns along the length of the tool. However, there are also speculations that these scratches might have just been made to create a better grip. But if we look at the tallies themselves, these markings have led to various hypotheses by scholars who claim they indicate an understanding of decimals or prime numbers. It has been suggested that the third column, which lists numbers between 10 and 20, might be a table of prime numbers. Which is impressive, because if you ask a modern human for a table of prime numbers, more times than not, it'll look like this. But if we go in between the Stone Age and current times, medieval Europe used the tally in a unique way. Split tally sticks became a widespread solution for recording debts and transactions. The notches indicated the amount involved, and the stick was split down in the middle, providing each party with a physical receipt. To enhance security, the halves were made unequal in length. The stock or the longer portion was given to the lender, and the foil, or the shorter portion, was given to the borrower. The distinctive irregularities of the split surface ensured that only the matching halves could be perfectly rejoined, preventing fraud and serving as legal evidence in medieval courts. In modern times, we have replaced the pen and paper method of tallying with electronics such as the digital tally counter. These counters are used for counting people, animals, or things that are coming and going from a particular location. The idea of the tally is also seen through an abacus, where by sliding counters along rods and grooves, one can perform mathematical functions. And there's actually a digital counter right in front of you. If you press that subscribe button, the number of subscribers actually goes up by one and that would make me this much happier.